It is a fundamental principle in mathematics that when you conduct repeated operation over a particular set of number, you tend to get another operation. It means that all of these numbers, all of these operations propagate when we do them repeatedly. Let me shed more light on that so that it can be clear. We said, for example, if I'm starting with a basic operation addition, or maybe even subtraction. Now, when I conduct repeated addition, for example, I start with, my, with number two, and I add a two, and I add another two, and I even add another two. So, this is two plus two plus two plus two, that would give me eight. But actually, unbeknownst to me, I have, I have actually, you know, derived another operation here, and which is multiplication, because I have added two over, I mean, in four places, and that's what we call two times four. That is four, that is two in four places. Of course, this operation is commutative, meaning that this, we can flip this and write, rearrange this and have four times two. So we are still going to get the same answer, even though the interpretations are not the same, that here you say two in four places and here you say four in two places. We are going to arrive at the same answer. So that's why it is commutative. So, but you get the idea that by, by you know, repeating an operation, you propagate and you get a new operation, which is multiplication. Now, what if we conduct, okay, so repeated addition, of course, also gives rise to, uh, repeated subtraction also gives rise to division. Division, yes. So, um, th that is, for example, if I, if I asked you to say 2 divided by 6, it is simply saying that how many times can I divide that 6? How many times can I subtract 2 on 2? Before, I, before I, I have nothing left, before there is nothing left for me to subtract. So for example, this is just saying, if I have 6 and I subtract 2 the first time, I'm going to have 4. I subtract 2 again, I'm going to have 4 here at this level. I subtract 2 again, and I have 2 left at this level. I subtract 2 again, I have nothing left. So until this point, I have subtracted 2 in 3 places. So it means that 6 divided by 2 gives 3. So you see, I have invented another operation by conducting successive subtractions. All right? Now, what if we now go further, one step further, and we decide to conduct repeated multiplications? All right, let's try that. So I could say 2, let's start with the number 2 still, by 2 by 2 by 2. Now, this is 2 in how many places? 4 places. What would this give us? 2 times 2, 4 times 2, 8 times 2, 16, and that would be 16 for the answer. I have actually, unbeknownst to me, derived a new operation from conducting this addition, this multiplication repeatedly. And that new operation is described as index. It's described as index, or you could see exponents. Exponents. Alright. So our topic for today, now what if I decided to conduct more repeated division, I'm going to get a root, a root. So, our topic for today is indices, indices. Alright, welcome back to the channel. If you have not already, please uh, join the family by subscribing to the channel. It's going to help the channel to grow and of course, um, you know, you know, expand the scope of um, of our work so that uh, more people can get inspired by our work and you know you're helping more people by subscribing and hitting the notification bell it tells us that you're impressed with our content all right let's get right into it we are talking about indices today now indices is actually the same as the term exponent so they actually mean the same thing exponent the word exponent is gotten from a Latin word. This is also gotten from the Latin word, which is index. An index 
means in mass, index translates to what we now call power. But they, they used, when in the inception of the, of the word indices, there used to be a difference between those two words, index and power. And I'm going to spell out the differences. But basically, exponent is also a Latin word, which is exponos, which means that to, to expose, to show something, or to lay out. All right. So, so what exponent does is it lay out, you know, it, it gives us the number of times something occurs. Okay. But basically, what I'm saying is this. Index means the number of times in a multiplication of course, that's just the meaning. Index means the number of times multiplication of course. So for example, if I have two raised to the power of four, now this thing will mean that I multiply two in four places. Now if I multiply two in four places, we did get 16 the other time, 16. Now, let's define these terms. This is called the base of the base and this is called the exponent the exponent now called power originally this used to be called the power the power and this is how you 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 will know that this used to be called the power because if you remember set we talked about cardinality of set cardinality of set and what is cardinality of set? It means the power of a set. Given the formula 2 raised to the power n. So such that whatever answer you get is the cardinality or power of that set. So the answer we arrive at is usually the power, but nowadays it has been changed to actually uh, the exponent being called the power. All right? but originally the power was the answer and the exponent, the power, the index was the exponent. All right? So, we basically know now that the number which carry this exponent is the base and that, of course, the smaller number that is the superscript is exponent, alright? So, now, we know that carrying out um, this operation repeatedly, I mean this multiplication operation, gives rise to the operation of indices. Now, we have a set of rules because of the so many use of now the, the basic idea is we want to try and look for a way to break down as much as possible the intricacies of every form of mathematics generally every form of mathematics so that's why they've come up with a set of rules that guide indices so we have rules of indices rules of indices now we have they have their names, we call them uh, multiplication rule, division rule, but I won't be going into that, and I just be mentioning it even as I continue. So the first one says this, if I have a particular number a raised to the power of n times a raised to the power of n, this is called the multiplication rule. Now, before we come at what it says, let us imagine what, let us just exemplify what all of these numbers might mean. For example, if a were to be 2, so times a again and m were to the 3 and maybe n were to the 5. I mean, we said 2, a is 2. So what would this mean? This would be 2 in 3 places, that would be 2 times 2 times 2. And this would mean 2 in 5 places. So this is for this and this is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that is, those are 5, alright, so we have 2 times 2 times 2, I guess that's 32, 32, 64, 128, and 256, so we have everything together will give us 256, but before we arrive at 256, notice that we just multiply this by this by this by this by this by this, it means that we multiply 2 in how many places, or we have 2 in how many places, we have 2 in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 places, which translates to 256. Now, which would just be gotten if we had simply taken one of these bases and added the powers, I mean, the, the exponents. So, the principle says that, and here we're going to have 2 raised to the power 8. So, the principle states that 
the, the multiplication of the base will give us an addition of exponents. Multiplication of base, addition of powers, or addition of exponents. All right, for the case, I mean, I'm going to be using powers to represent rep, uh, uh, exponents. All right, so I could use them interchangeably, but I've told you the discrepancy uh, in the beginning. All right, now the second rule states that if a raised to the power n is divided by a raised to the power n. Now, this principle only stands provided that the bases are the same. If the bases are different, the rule is does this rule does not apply. So if the bases are, are, are the same, then the rule applies, of course. So here, for example, if my m were to be let's still use two, for example, if my m were to be six divided by a, uh, I mean by two, and n were to be three, for example. This would mean that I will have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That will be 2 in 6 places divided by 2 times 2 times 2 in 3 places. So this takes care of this, takes care of this, takes care of this. Alright, and we are, we are left with 2 times 2 times 2, which means I are left with 2 raised to the power 3. So which we could have easily gotten by just saying, picking one of the bases, the same way we did of this, and take, and I'm taking 2. I mean, one of the, the, the powers, 6 minus 3, we have 2 raised to the power 6 minus 3, and we have 3. So, it means that it translates to say that the base, we take one of the base, will be, when we do have the division of the bases, we have the subtraction of exponents of power. So here, remember, division of base, addition of exponents, division of base, subtraction of exponents. Alright? Let's continue further. Another rule says, that if a is raised to the, now this is going to be called, if, if a is raised to the power of zero, for example, this is going to be called the zero rule, the zero power rule, zero exponential. Now, this is said to be one, is given to be one. Now, I would advise, if you want more insight on this, I would advise you to go and watch one of my videos that I made on why a raised to the power of zero was one. And I did prove how it was. I'm also going to simply prove it briefly here. Uh, but I also did prove about 0 is about 0 equals 1. How this is possible. I also proved it in that video. So I'm enjoying to go and watch it. I'll link it in the description below. Alright, now. Why is A raised to the power 0 1? In fact, fundamentally, any number raised to the power of 0 is 1. And here it is. Now, do you remember that... If I have equal bases, like 2 raised to the power of 3, divided by 2 raised to the power of 3, if I have equal bases and I want to subtract this, what would we do? We would say 2, we express this 2 in 3 places, in multiples of 3, and express this 2 again in 3 places. Now this takes care of this, this takes care of this, this and we have 1 left. So this is a very simple way of describing this relationship. So, when you have a zero power, then you have one to be your answer. All right. Now, the the next rule is going to be the the negative power rule. The negative power rule simply says if a is raised to the power of minus n, for example, or minus x. Okay, let's use n as we'll be using. If a is raised to the power of n, for example, or minus n, for example, what you have is that A, we are going to have the inverse, in fact, if you're familiar with mathematics, you already know that a negative power means an inverse. So it means that at the, it's going to be the inverse of A to the power of M, or to the index of M. Alright? So, we have 1 over A raised to the power M fundamentally, that's what we mean. Alright? So, and we can also prove this by saying that, you know that if that A, um, were to represent 2. And I have 2 raised to the power minus 3, for example. You know, I could here, I could I could simply put this could have this could have arisen from 2 raised to the power 0 minus 3 as this. So if this arose from 2 raised to the power 3, it means that what I had from the beginning was, I mean in the beginning was 2 raised to the power 0 divided by 2 raised to the power 3. 
from the fact that this division of the basis will lead to a subtraction of the exponents. So we have we have that 2 raised to the power 0 divided by 2 raised to the power 3. And 2 raised to the power 0, anything raised to the power 0 will be 1 over 2 raised to the power 3. So you see? They look alike. Alright. So that is one way to prove that. Now, now this will be called the negative power rule, as I said. Now another rule is the the power power rule. No, let's do the fraction, the root, the power root uh, rule, power root rule, or root power rule, whichever one. What is just saying is this: that if a is raised to the power of n over n, so a is raised to the power of a fraction. All right, it's very simple. What it's saying is, it's saying that we are going to be taking the nth root of a, the nth root of a, and then we're going to be taking the power, the index to the n of that. That's what it's basically saying. So it means that if I have a raised to the power of, say, n went to the 1, and I have 1 over n. So we are going to simply take the nth root still of a raised to the power of 1. So it doesn't change anything here, notice. Alright. Alright. So this is the, the root power rule. Alright. So it basically means that this denominator is going to be your root. And the numerator is going to be your power, the next power. Alright. Then the next rule says that... Um, which of them is absent? Okay, we've not talked about the power power rule or the power rule. Same thing with the power rule. Okay, if I have a raised to the power m or raised to the power of n. So basically, this is saying that a raised to the power m or cause n times. So it's saying that a raised to the power m times a raised to the power m times a raised to the power m times a to n number of times. Alright, so how do we simplify this then? Now it's simply saying that a raised to the power m times n, so that a will become n, n, n. Alright, so that is the understanding of this. So that, for example, if I have 2 raised to the power 3 all squared, it's telling us that 2 raised to the power 3 times 2, so that we have 2 raised to the power 6, now it's 64. Right? So, now, another rule that could apply here is the fact that what if we had if we had this in what if we had this in um, a set a set of two numbers like if I have ax raised to the power n or n something like this now what this means is a raised to the power n and x raised to the power mn is basically telling you that this n has a distributive property on this. Just like you would, if I have something like this, 2 raised to the power a plus b and 2 raised to the power a plus b, that this 2 is distributive on a and b, where, where we have 2 to open bracket to have 2ab, 2 plus um, 2a plus 2b, uh, it means that this guy is actually distributive on this and this, so that a will carry the power n and x raised to the power n will carry the power n. And notice fundamentally that this n belongs to only n of the x. Alright. Okay. So now the next rule is, and we've done this, we've done this, we've done this. Alright, I guess these are basically all the rules. Not all the rules, um, other rules are just um, degenerate of some of these rules, of course. Other rules are degenerate for some of these rules. In the same way, what if I have a negative um, root power? If I have a negative root power, say, for example, I have a raised to the power minus n over n. Alright? So if I had something like this, it will still mean, I'm going to apply this first rule, which says a over 1 over a um, raised to the power m over n. Then I apply the next principle, which says this, this principle, which says, 1 over nth root of a all to the power n. Alright? So that's basically it. That is basically for that. Alright, let's go into solving some questions on 
indices. So for example, what if I have, I'm going to take one of the questions from um, one of my exercise textbooks, and, uh, uh, but I'm going to give just uh, some simple questions here so that we work with first. What if I have something like this? If I have dp raised to the power minus 2, for example. dp raised to the power minus 2. Now, if you have to simplify something like this, all you have to do is this. Now, notice, this d is standing in, is having a multiplicative relationship with p, and p is an inverse, all right? The inverse square. So, very simple. What you do is d times what this means is 1 over p squared. So it means d over p squared, basically. Because you are going to be applying here. Now, this guy, this um, negative power actually belongs to p alone. Unlike, look at this second question saying that dp or is a minus 2. So if you have something like this, then you have dp will become. Will become Inverse of dp all squared, so that I could have if I you know distribute it on both of them, I have one over d squared p squared. All right, so you see they are fundamentally different from one another. So what if I have what if I have a question like this? What if I have a question like this that d raised to the power minus one p raised to the power minus three what if I have something like this? Alright, so basically what I have is it's saying the same thing. But what I'm going to do is try and interpret now. When questions in indices look clumsy this way, what you do is try and interpret them singly. If I interpret this single, I'm going to have 1 over d times here I have 1 over p q. So this becomes 1 by 1, we have 1 over d p q. Right. All right, I've got five, um, eight questions here um, from my textbook, and I've written them in order of complexity. I started from the simplest to the hardest. Now, I mixed them, I mixed equations with simple expressions. For example, these are expressions, why this is an equation, and these, of course, is an equation, and these ones are expressions. All right, let's quickly um, get into solving it. The first one says, the minus c of squared. Now, okay, we could we could we can denote something here. You, need, you see that a negative number is being um, squared here. Now, if I am squaring a negative number, and that square is not for this the number alone, but for the negative um, the negative sign and the, the number itself, then when I square the number. Provided that this minus is part of the bracket, is inside the bracket, if I square this number, I should get a positive answer. But if this number, if this number were to be an odd number, if I use like 5, an odd number, this, I'm going to end up getting uh, a minus in my answer. But if the, the power, this index, were to be an even number, then I'll get a positive number at the end of the day. So let me just show you what I mean. If I have, for example, if I have minus 2 or is for 3, it's going to eventually give me minus 8. But if I have 2 raised minus 2 raised to power 6, it's going to give me at the end of the day 64. You see that? So because this guy, this power, this index is even, then I get an even, I get an even uh, answer. Alright? So the so here we have this squared is going to give us c squared is going to be positive then times c raised to the power four all over c raised to the power five negative c again raised to the power five so we know that we're going to end up with negative c because it is it is the power is odd all right so what do we do let's say uh, we're going to use the first rule multiplication of the base gives us additional power, so we have 6 here, c raised to the power 6, that's 2 plus 4, I mean now, 
power over series power 5, so we have c raised to power 6, series to power 6, all over I mean, minus series to power 5. So we are going to end up with negative c because negative is dividing it. 6 minus 5, minus being um, with regards to this division. So we have minus c equals c minus this, which is 1. And our answer is minus c. Alright. Number 2 says 3 raised to power. Number 2 says that 3 raised to power n minus 1 by 3 raised to power 1 minus n. And how do we go about this? Very simply, multiplication of base, addition of power. So we have 3 raised to power n minus 1 plus, now you have to put in bracket for the second item so that nothing changes. So you have 3 raised to power, um, I mean the values are not affected, right? 3 raised to power n minus 1, you begin to open bracket, plus 1 minus n. Seeing this, you have uh, plus minus 1 plus 1 is going to give us 0, and plus n minus n, n minus n is going to give us 0, so we have 3 raised to power 0, which is what? 1 at the end of the day, alright? Then number 3 says, the, the cube root of 4 is to power, so we have the cube root of 4 is to power 1.5, okay? So very simply, what we could do is this, let's transform this into the, the ordinary form. You remember the ordinary form that we came from the law of um, a raised to power 1 over n, which tends to the nth root of a, of course. So we're going to, this is going to be the ordinary form, so we're going to go back to that form and have 4, which is already raised to power 1.5, all raised to power 1 over 3. But how about this 1.5? What do we have of it? We know that 1.5 is a fraction of 2, uh, 3 over 2. This is what it means in fraction. It's the decimal, rather, of 3 over 2. So we change that. We have 4 raised to power 3 over 2, then all raised to power 1 over 3. So remember this power rule. Using the power rule, it means that these are going to multiply each other so that we have 4 raised to power 3 over 2 multiplied by 1 over 3. 3 takes care of 3, and we have 4 raised to power 1 over 2. Now we're going to use the um, power, the the you know fraction power rule, which says we are going to take the second root, which is going to be the square root of 4. So we need not write 2 here because the square root, this sign already means square root without the number. So square root of 2 is square root of 4 rather is 2. Alright. Now there's I'm going to read this part of the board. <laughs> then we get to number four nearly. Number four says that two raised to the power, now this is an equation number four. This is an equation says two raised to the power a minus raised to the power minus uh, two equals minus 40. Now you have to be careful while solving this. The first thing you have to you can do is to, to divide both sides by two. So if you divide both sides by two, you're gonna have this, and then you have this equals seven. So we have a which is the uh, unknown is left alone here equals minus 7. So seeing this, you can transform this. Now this will mean that it is 1 by a raised to power half equals minus 7. Now remember, when we were doing substitute formula, it did tell you that if I have 1 by a equals 2. So then a should be inverse of this as well. If inverse of a is 2, then a should be inverse of 2, all right? So we're going to use that principle here and transform this to a raised to the power half, then we need 1 over minus 7. Alright, so a raised to the power half means root of a, the square root of course now, 1 over, equal to 1 over minus 7. So from here we can square both sides, when we square both sides, we have square cancels root by the principle of say a is now 1 over 2 times 2, so that 2 cancels to now we have a left so we have a equals one over now minus seven is going to be squared it's going to give us a positive number which is 49 all right so that is it about that equation then number five yes number five says two raised to this is an expression two raised to five times four raised to minus two all over two raised to minus three 
times three plus six. Now, what we have to do is simply, since uh, the bases are almost, almost the same, what we do is make sure they are uniform also. So we have two raised to the power five by two raised to the power two here. Then all raised to the power minus two of this is left because this four represents raised to the power two and raised to the power the other power that is there. Raised to the exponents that is there. So we have two raised to the power minus three by two raised to the power six. So now we now have uniformity in the base. So we have two raised to the power five multiplied. Let's bring it to the front here. So we have 2 raised to the power 5 multiplied by 2. This is going to multiply this raised to the power minus 4. Alright? Over 2 raised to the power 3 by 2 raised to the power 6. So this becomes multiplication of base leads to addition of exponents. 5 plus minus 4 all over 2 raised to the power 3 plus. Now this is negative 3. Excuse me, this is negative 3. So we have minus 3 plus 6. Alright? So that we have 2 raised to the power of 5 minus 4 over 2 raised to the power minus 3 plus 4 is going to be us 3. So we have 2 raised to the power 5 minus 4 is 1. So we naturally not write in the English right to we don't need to write it for 2 raised to the power 3. Alright. So we have this, then it means that we are going to cut, we are going to divide so that we have 2 raised to the power 1 here minus 3. I hope this is clear, showing that it is 2 raised to the power 1 or like 2 divided by 2 raised to the power 3, so which becomes 2 raised to the power 1 minus 3. So that becomes 2 raised to the power minus 2, which is 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 4. And that is our final answer, 1 over 4. How the camera is able to capture that. Okay, so I'm going to clean this place for the next question, which is number 6. So number six here says that now there, there are no unknowns here, there, there are all numbers as this one. So we have the six is the square root of 8.1 by 10 to the power minus 6 all over 2.25 times 10 to the power 7. Alright, this is very simple as well. Now what you can do to make the equation not look clumsy to you is First, bring this guy, this root. You can separate this in, this equation. And how do you separate? You can have something like this. Let's try and separate. Okay, before we separate, another thing we could do is we could make, since these are perfect squares, seeing that if we remove the point, they are perfect squares, then we could remove, remove the point first. Now we remove the point. We have this to become 81, where we move the point one time, right? So if we move the point once, we are going to get 81 times 81 divided by 10, right? So which means 81 times 10 is about minus 1. I hope this is clear. Okay. Then times 10 is about minus 6. All over. This becomes 2 to 5 times 10 is about, that will be 2 to 5 over 100, you know? 2 to 5 over 100. So which means 2 to 5 is 10 is about minus 2. Then times 10 to the power 7, all right? Now, you could also remove this root and have, bring it in form of power, which is going to be a fractional power, so that you have all is about 2, 1 over 2. So that we now have 81 over 2, 2, 5. Now, is, they are going to, by themselves, have this raised power half separately times, now we collect all of this together, 10, times I'm 10 raised to the power minus 1 times 10 to the power minus 6 is going to be minus 1 minus 6 all over 10 raised to the power minus 2 plus 7. So we have this raised to the power half is going to give us the square root of 81 which is 9 and the square root of 2 to 5 which is 15. Alright so times 10 to the power of to the power of what, what minus this minus this is going to be minus 7 over 10 raised to the power minus 2 plus this is going to be 5 plus 5, of course. So we have that 3 can cut through here. So we have 3 and here we have 5. So we have 3 over 5 times 10 raised to the power. Now this is 10 divided by 10. So we can use the division of which is minus 7 minus 5. Okay. Now remember that these 
still have the 1 over 2. We, we distributed on this, on these two. So we are distributing here, and then it still retains it, and it still retains it here. All right, I just forgot to put it that. that. So we have 3 over 5 times 10 to the power of minus 7 minus 5, so then it was minus 12, all to the power of 1 over 2. So see that we have 3 over 5 now times 7 to the power of this, we can have minus, which is the power of now, that we should, I mean minus 12, that we should multiply. So 2 is going to go here, 1 and 2 takes care of this guy to give 6, right? So we have 3 over 5 times 10 to the power of minus 6. Alright, so we can divide this and it's going to give us 0 0.6 times 10 raised to the power minus 6. Alright, now in standard form, this is going to be 6 times 10 raised to the power minus 1 times 10 raised to the power minus 6, which means 6 times 10 raised to the power minus 1 plus minus 6 is going to be minus 1 minus 6, that is minus 7, and that is the final answer. All right, all right. So let's now. I am going to be solving these two questions, and we're going to give you one assignment that you will submit on either our Facebook page or in the comment section below. I really want to see you do this to be sure that you have understood what we discussed so far. All right. So we have the fifth root. That's number, number seven. Huh? It says the fifth root of one zero two four. One zero two four. Raised to one s. Raised to power minus ten. Raised to power half. Okay, okay. Now this is simple. Let's use the principle of separating first um, that I used here in this one. So what we could do is this, we're going to have 1024 alone being raised to the power of half. We distribute half on this guy. And of course, it will still be raised to the power of 1 over 5. I hope this is clear. You know that this means raised to all of this means 1024 is to the power minus 10 over 1 over 2. All raised to the power of 1 over 5, that's what it means. So I distribute both of this on this. So then I distribute dot means times of course. S raised to the power minus 10 times 1 over 2. Then all of this is to the power 1 over 5. Okay? Alright. So here we have 1 0 to 4 raised to the power half. So we have 1 0 to 4 raised to the power half is going to be. 1 0 to 4 raised to the power of 1 over 10. Because we are going to multiply this, remember power root times s. Now you see that this is going to multiply this as well. So this times this is 10. 10 takes care of 10. So we have raised to the power of minus 1. Alright? And this is going to be the 10th root of 1024. So in my opinion, that would be 2. Let's check. That would be 2 times 1, 2, 4, 4 times 2, 8, 8 times 2, 16, 16, 32, 64, 1, 1, 64, 1, 2, 8, 2, 5, 6, 5, 1, 2, 1, 0, 2, 4. So the 10th root of 1, 0, 2, 4 is 2. So times s to the power minus 1, and that becomes 2 over s. And that is our answer, because this would mean 2 times 1 over, 1 over s. All right. I'm going to solve the last one now, which is an equation as well. Now it says, that is number 8, it says that a raised to the power x over 2 equals 2 raised to the power 3 over 8 times 4 raised to the power 3 over 5. And we are asked to find x, okay? Right, very simply, what we do is try as much as possible. If you notice that they are in the same family, 
So number that is the same family, we talked about those two families, two times one, two, three is about one, two, three is about two, four, like that, like that. Those numbers are the same family. We also have numbers in the same family of three. We have three is about one to give three, three is about two to give nine, three is about three to give twenty-seven, three, uh, then times three, it's a one, two, four, three, seven to nine, so on and so forth. So all of those are in the same family, five as well, you know, and the same family. And those are the numbers we usually use there. The first, first three, first three, first four prime numbers. Two, three, five, seven, five. So this is the family of two, so we can break it down to two raised to the power three. And everything is raised by x over two equals two raised to the power three over eight times four this time. Okay, so four becomes two raised to the power two. Then everything is raised to the power three over five, all right. So that we have this is going to multiply this, and we have 2 raised to the power 3 times this is going to be 3x over 2. Let me write that clearly. 2 raised to the power 3x all over 2. Then equals to 2 raised to the power 3 over 8 times this becomes 2 raised to the power 2 times this becomes 6 over 5. So seeing this, we can use addition of multiplication of base becomes addition of exponents. So we have 2 raised to the power 3x over 2 equals 2 raised to the power 3 over 8. Plus 6 over 5. All right, let's solve this somewhere. If we solve this, we're going to have 2 raised to the power 3x over 2 becomes 2 raised to the power of LCM of this, and this is 40. Here, 5, 15, plus here, 8, 48. 5 in this, 8, 48. Right. So we have 2 raised to the power 3x over 2 equals 2 raised to the power this plus this should give us 63 over 40. Alright, now as this is, one of the rules of indices is this. If I have A raised to the N to give me A raised to the N. Now, for this law to hold, it definitely means if this base and this base are equal, then this index and this index are equal. Alright, so it means that I can take care of this so that m will be equal to n. So I can use 2 to take care of 2. So I have 3x over 2 becomes 63 over 40. So fundamentally, we can cross multiply here. So we have 3x by 40 equals 2 by 63. So as it, as it is here, I can divide both sides by 3 times 40 and 3 times 40 here. So that 3 takes care of 3, 40 takes care of 40, and left with x equals 3 takes care of 3 here, and, um, and I have 21, then 2 here 1, and 2 here 20. So we have 21 over 20. So, and that is going to be the answer. And let's be clear that we do not make any mistake here. We said 3x over 2, and 3x over 2. And 3 x over 2 equals this and this. This times 2 becomes 6 over 5 here. Then 6 over 5. I also have this 40. 5 by 15 plus this is 3 over 40. Alright. So we basically didn't make any mistake. And this is going to be our answer. It's going to be. Um, x equals 1 whole number, 1 over 20, or 1.05, yeah, 1.005. You can use calculators to check on that, so that is going to be our final summer. Thank you very much for seeing this video to the next. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'm going to actually on this same um, index, this is in fact the very simple aspect of index. We're going to be solving a lot of tedious questions as regards the index in our further videos. Stay tuned for it.